The Star Tribune is reporting that pills seized at Paisley Park in the aftermath of Prince's death were mislabeled. By the label read hydrocodone, the pills were actually an opioid that has been described as 100 times more powerful than morphine. Prince died from an accidental fentanyl overdose on April 21st. Last year in Minnesota, 72 people died from opioid overdoses an increase from the year before, and four times the number of deaths that occurred here back in 2000. Senator Amy Klobuchar is calling for a mandatory database that doctors would have to check before prescribing opioids. And Senator Klobuchar joins us now to talk about this and other issues. Thank you, Senator, for well, coming in. Well, thank you, Esme. It's great right. to be on again. Let's talk about this registry that you'd like to see, and, and how do you think that would help? Well, first of all, we are in of America. We have five percent but we're consuming 80% of the opioids. So there is clearly a problem here. A lot of times people need it after surgeries, but they've gotten hooked, people are taking it for too long, and now four out of five heroin users got their start with opioids. Proposed here is one we've just passed a bill, a bipartisan bill. Uh, four of us led it, two Democrats, two Republicans. Uh, that really lays the framework for a national approach uh, to the scourge. But secondly, we have to do more on prescription drug monitoring. Uh, we found a, a, a rehab guy up in Moorhead who had a patient who had over a hundred prescriptions from eight different providers. Now, a lot of those providers are sucked in. They don't know. They believe. They start, if they could look at that showed not but North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Florida, other states, uh, we would do a job of trying to get these people off opioids and get them. Well, Minnesota has a database, but it's voluntary. Obviously, it's not working. Uh, uh, I mean, it sounds like you want something with a, little, a lot more Well, Minnesota's it. worked a bit better than some Yes, we would like to see a federal requirement that all the states do this cross state lines because people aren't go across this border to another state uh, where it's not being reported and when it's voluntary sure a lot of doctors are I've talked to a lot of them that say I want to do this but we really need to get the whole picture here uh, so that we can basically doctors know what they're doing are they prescribing it to someone who really needs it or they're prescribing it to someone who's gone to 80 different or at each one Let's talk about, uh, you're, you're calling for hearings on the increase, the 400% increase in the cost of EpiPens, millions of prescriptions a year, a life-saving medication, not just for young people, but also adults. Uh, I think people are outraged when they see My own daughter has a severe nut allergy, so she always carries an EpiPen. So many other parents, it just resonated the minute I saw this. It's gone up from $100. 500 to 600 dollars now. Why? Because Mylan Pharmaceutical uh, has basically a virtual monopoly. It landed in their lap because one company's products were recalled because another one didn't get their drug approved, and now they can go for it. And that's what they're doing at the expense of customers, at the expense of patients, at the expense of young children who need this product every single day to carry it with them. So that's why I'm calling on the FTC to do an investigation. I think we should have hearings in the Judiciary Committee. Public pressure has worked in the past when companies do this. And then finally, we need a systemic change. John McCain and I have a bill to allow the reimportation drugs from Canada so you can get cheaper ones. You know how much these EpiPen it's may sell for in Canada? 85 bucks. Well, but I, I guess, you know, what's so frustrating, I think, for consumers is that this has happened before. It has. With other drugs. I mean, is there, or is it possible to have legislation to prevent these kinds yes. of hikes? So, I've done another bipartisan bill with Senator Grassley and Leahy and others where we have uh, basically uh, done more to ensure that the generic out on the market so there's competition. That bill we just introduced. The second thing would be the allowing for reimportation of drugs from Canada. That would boost competition. A third thing uh, would be to stop the situation where the drug companies can make deals to keep the market. They actually do this. It's uh, and Senator Grassley and I have a bill to stop that. Um, and then negotiations under Medicare Part are things we can do because basically when you give people monopoly power in a capitalist system, they go for it. Fair competition. We want to have a number of providers that compete with each other. If that means bringing in some competitive forces from Canada, that's fine. But when you allow one company to control drugs and the prices, you're basically telling 
Uh, no, we'd rather make money off you. Right, and you're saying that you want an answer from the Federal Trade Commission within 90 days. Right, uh, of a, a better systemic approach, not just a case-by-case -case approach. Very quickly, I know that you're a, a surrogate for Hillary Clinton. How do you think the campaign is going? Because right now it looks pretty, pretty good for her. Well, uh, the convention was actually a turning point. I think it gave her that opportunity uh, to put out her ideas, uh, to make a case for to independents and others. Um, uh, we, having Mayor Bloomberg up there talking about what he thought mattered for business, having Warren Buffett come out the next week and talk about who he believed was the right candidate for president. I think at the same time, you'd seen uh, Donald Trump spark directed whether he's going after judges, whether he's uh, immigrants, and he just recently went after a baby and told him rally. So I think he's had a very rough time, and it's given those conventions gave uh, voters, and especially independent voters, uh, who've been just gave them a chance to measure the two candidates and make some decisions. Well, Senator Klobuchar, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time this morning. It's great to be on.